Hey what's happening gang, welcome to your 19th Django tutorial and in this video I'm going to introduce you to the user creation form that comes packed with Django. Alright then, so now we have this accounts app set up and we also have this sign up page right here. The next step is to show the user some kind of form so they can actually sign up to the website. Now, I guess what we could do is create this HTML form from scratch in the template and then handle all the authentication on the server ourselves, but we really don't need to. Like I said, Django comes shipped with a load of user auth stuff that we can use to help us out. And one of those things is a user creation form. And the cool thing about using this form that Django provides is that it comes with form hints on the front end and it also includes validation to check whether a username already exists or if a password is too short, etc. And we'll see all this later when we see the form in action. For now, let us use this user creation form. So over here in the views file, the first thing we need to do is import this form. Then when we've imported it, we can create a new instance of that form over here in the sign up view, and then send that instance of the form down to the template so we can output it to the screen. Make sense? So the way we import it is by saying from Django dot contrib dot auth dot forms and then we import user creation form so no space there now we can use this thing inside the view so I'll create a new variable called form and set that equal to user creation form and we'll invoke that to create a new instance of this form so now we have that instance stored inside this variable, we can send that variable, that form, down to the template. Remember, the third parameter over here is a dictionary of data we can send down. So the property name is going to be called form, but you can call this whatever you want. And that will be equal to the form variable we just created right here. So an instance of the form, which we're now sending down to the template. So inside the template, now what we can do is output that form instead of hard coding all the different input fields ourselves, What we still need is a form tag. And we'll give the class of site-form. This is purely for stylistic purposes later on when we style the website. Uh, the action and the method we'll talk about a little bit later on in the video. For now, let's just output this form that we send down to the template by doing our double curly braces to output data. Then it's just form, the name of the property that we sent down. OK, so now we're outputting all of those different form fields that comes baked into Django's authentication system. What we do still need is an input field to submit the form, a submit button. So we'll say input. And the type is going to be submit the name. We don't really need for now. And the value will be sign up. OK, so now we have this input field as well. We can save that and view all this in a browser. So that was very little work that we needed to do, but now we have this form output to the browser just like that. And we have these hints here and we have the different fields and yet it doesn't look great, but that's purely because we've not used any kind of good CSS on this yet. So let us just inspect this over here, this form and have a look in DevTools. I'm just going to zoom in so we can see this a little bit better. Okay. And if I inspect the form itself, then we can see right here, it has an action of index.html and a method of post. So first of all, what does this method of post mean? Well, if you're not too sure on different types of requests, in basic terms, we have various. The two most common are post and get. Now, a get request is used to receive data from a server. So for example, when you type in a URL in the address bar and press enter, that is a get request because you're receiving a HTML file from the server. Likewise, we can use get requests in Ajax to request information on the fly like JSON. When we use a post request, what we're typically doing is sending data to the server and then creating something, a new record on the server. And that's the difference. OK, now a get request and a post request can both go to the same URL. So, for example, we can send a get request to forward slash accounts forward slash sign up to receive this page. And we can also send a post request to this URL to send data to the server. So in both cases, whether it's a get request or a post request, in Django's case, it's going to fire this function. 
So obviously, if it's a post request, we want to do something different. We don't want to just send back a new form to the browser. We want to handle that data that's sent to us and do something different. Now, we're not going to do that in this tutorial. We'll do it in the next tutorial. But I just wanted you to understand that because what we do need to do in this tutorial is say this action right here is going to be equal to forward slash accounts forward slash sign up, which is the same URL as this thing right here. So this is for the get request and this is for the post request. So this action attribute is saying, OK, when you click submit over here, where do you want me to submit the data to? Which URL? We're saying submit it to this URL. So on the server, this function fires and it's going to receive that data and we can detect whether this is a post request or a, a get request and then react differently dependent on that. We'll take a look at that in the next tutorial. So I just wanted to explain what these things mean right here. But for now, what we've done is we've created a new instance of this user creation form and sent it down to the sign up template right here so that we can output it to the browser and we have that right there. And this is going to come baked with all of that kind of authentication for us. In the next tutorial, what we'll do is try receiving the data that a user inputs into this form inside this view right here, detect that it's a post request and do something with that data.